Okay, after this, the bare bones discussion of capital in movement, of how capital reproduces capital on an expanding scale and reproduces the working class on an expanding scale, of how capital becomes merely the accumulation of previous year's surplus value. Uh, Marx has a long chapter discussing the dynamics of capitalist accumulation in more detail. And one of the most important um, uh, ideas he discusses there is unemployment, or what he calls the reserve army of labour. His argument is this. So, uh, consider capitalism in a boom period. Capitalism is booming. Um, to a first approximation, what will happen is that capital will take on more and more workers to, for the expanding production. And indeed, that is what happens. Um, Capital has many ways of expanding the supply of labour, uh, for example, by um, drawing, uh, historically, women into industrial labour, by drawing younger people into industrial labour, by drawing uh, migrant labour from places where capitalist production is less developed, uh, which may be the countryside of the capitalist country itself, into labour. Um, but the demand for labour will also increase. When the demand for labour increases, uh, this creates the conditions for uh, workers to win higher wages and maybe even better conditions. Um, and Marx is very far from denying these possibilities. In fact, he insists and the importance of the labour movement of taking advantage of these periods. He argues uh, that this doesn't abolish wage slavery. Um, it's any more than slaves being well fed abolishes chattel slavery. He argues that it means that the, the weight of the golden chain, which the working class has forged for itself, has become so great as to allow for some relaxation of the tension. How will capital respond to this? Capital will re respond in this boom period, when it um, is making good profits, capital will respond, uh, respond by uh, accelerating the introduction of new technologies. It will do that particularly if uh, wages are increasing and it is anxious to economise on labour costs. Um, thus, um, after the great general strike in France in 1968, which led to big increases in wages, you have a, a bit of a boom period for French capitalist industry in which they um, invest very heavily in more advanced technologies. These more advanced technologies, uh, by their nature, um, tend to uh, replace living labour by dead labour, to replace workers by machinery. And um, there's a lot of talk about this today in automation abolishing jobs. In fact, automation has abolished a lot of jobs already. Um, there are many factories... Uh, where you can go around and see uh, there's nobody working on the production lines already. And this will spread into other fields. And this is a built-in drive of capital. Now, the capitalist apologist argument is these people will find jobs elsewhere. And Marx doesn't deny the possibility of that in general. He just says there is no automatic, quick correlation between the displacement of labour and the creation of new jobs. In particular, he says, the supply and demand mechanism in the labour market works asymmetrically. That when you have a reserve army of labour, an army of unemployed, that creates pressure, or it gives the capitalists the ability to exert pressure on the workers in work to work harder. If you don't work harder, we can replace you with these guys and girls 
or on the street. Um, so the over were the lack of un unemployment of the Reserve Army of Labour acts as a pressure on the workers who are in work to increase their productivity, which in turn gives the capitalists a chance to get rid of more of them and to increase unemployment. So supply and demand do not operate as autonomous factors here. And there is built into capitalism a mechanism which, by one means or another, will ensure that it always has a reserve army of labour, that supply and demand in the labour market will not balance. And in fact, modern orthodox economists have the same idea, only what they call it is the natural rate of unemployment. It's not natural, it's capitalist.